انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار قال العز وجل في القران المجيد بعد ان اقول اعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم وقال الذين كفروا لولا نزل عليه القران جمله واحده كذلك لنثبت به فؤادك ورتلناه ترتيلا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي verily all praise is for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him and we ask for his aid and we ask for his forgiveness and we ask him to protect ourselves from the evils of our own selves and our evil actions whomsoever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to guide there is none that can misguide him and whomsoever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to misguide there is none that can guide him and i bear witness that none has the right to be worshiped except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and that he has no partners and that muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was his last and final messenger my respected elders brothers and sisters in al islam throughout recent history we have experienced a technological revolution in the last 10 or 20 years or so we can do things today with the tips of our fingers on our phones that we could have only imagined even a few years ago and just like we find certain things impressive today over time they become outdated they become lame and they become out of trend just like 10 15 years or so ago the craze was for those that remember the blackberry phones and bbm and msn messenger and this is all ancient this is all finished now and today it's all about the iphones and the 14 pro maxes and this is the example of this dunya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-kahf وَاضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ فَأَصْبَحَ هَشِيمًا تَذْرُوهُ الرِّيَاحُ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مُقْتَدِرًا Allah, he gives the example, the parable of this dunya. He says, it is as if when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends water down from the skies, and from this water vegetation grows and mingles with the water, and it becomes relevant, it becomes new, it becomes fresh. and then by the next day this vegetation becomes old it becomes weak until it becomes like wheat and then the wind blows it away and with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate knowledge the supreme power or one thing which we have in front of us today which has tested passed the test of time and will continue to pass the test of time and that is the holy quran there is no quran pro or quran plus the quran as it was revealed to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is still relevant today and will be relevant till the end of time and unfortunately we have become so occupied today with our phones with our netflix series with our instagram facebooks that we have abandoned this kalam of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can easily spend one or two hours a day watching a series but we struggle to even spend 10 minutes talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and listening to what he has to say through his kalam of this holy Quran companionship in this dunya no doubt is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best friend one can make in this dunya is to be sahib al-Quran the friend the companion of the holy Quran so how can we befriend this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a sahih hadith which is recorded in Tirmidhi and Abu Daud It will be said to the companion of the Quran recite and rise in status as you used to recite in the world and your position will be at the last verse you recite 
The Quran addresses the one who recited the Quran as Ya Sahib al Quran, O companion, O friend, O associate of this Quran, rise and recite in status just like you used to recite and read in this dunya. Imagine on the day of judgment, Yawm al Qiyamah, where that day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yawm yafirru al mar'u min akhi, that on that day you will run away. From your friend, wa ummihi wa abi, from your mother and your father, wa sahibatihi wa bani, and from your partner and your children. Yawma yafiru man umin akhi wa ummihi wa abi, wa sahibatihi wa bani, li kulli imrim minhum yawma idin shaknu yugni. Why? Because on that day it will be every man for themselves. Everyone will be saying nafsi, nafsi. Imagine on that day you will be referred to as sahib al Quran, O companion, O friend of the Quran. What a high ranking. Uh, position that would be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst them. We are currently in the month of Rabi al Awal and it normally indicates that Ramadan is approximately six months away. We're halfway there approximately. So we should try and refresh this Quran, this book, which we unfortunately have made the book of Ramadan and not the book throughout the year. And in Ramadan we are very engaged in it, which is very good. But then for the rest of the month it is on our top shelf and it is gathering dust and we forget about it. Maybe occasionally on Juma we'll read a bit of Surah Al-Kaf. Let's revive the Sunnah of reciting the Holy Quran. What are some of the benefits of reciting the Quran? Just to remind myself first and foremost and to everyone here. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Isra, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا Allah says we sent the Quran that which is healing, shifa, wa rahmah and mercy to the believers and it does not increase the wrongdoers except in loss. This Quran is a shifa, it is a healing. What kind of healing? It is a healing of our mental health. It is a healing of our spiritual health and it is also a healing which is proven by Prophet Muhammad of our physical health and our ailments. Just like we feed our stomachs with food so that our body can function and just like we watch things and uh, kind of download information from our society to feed our brains, what are we feeding our souls with? That empty hole is the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Furqan, which is what I opened the khutbah with, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّنَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنُ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدًا كَذَلِكَ لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ وَرَتَّلْنَاهُ تَرْتِيلًا The Kuffar asked the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, why is this Qur'an revealed in parts, this jumla? Why a few verses here, a few verses there? over the course of 23 years. Why not just send the book down in one go? And Allah, He answers the question through Prophet Muhammad ﷺ in this verse by saying that we have revealed it in portions, in parts, to strengthen your heart. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He understands that we go through different positions, different times, we are sometimes on top of the world, we are sometimes feeling rock bottom. And so depending on the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and the conditions of the Sahaba would dictate which verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reveal to them to strengthen their hearts, to reassure them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was with them. And likewise, we should use this as a way to read the Quran. No one expects you to read the Quran cover to cover, but rather look at those stories. If you are feeling lonely, then look at those companions like uh, Yunus alayhi salam when he was in the belly of the whale and read the verses referring to him. And when you are smashing life and everything is going well, look at Suleiman alayhi salam, look at Dawud alayhi salam, Look at Yusuf alayhi salam, how he, he, he initiated his life literally at rock bottom, in the bottom of a well. And he ended his life as one of the ministers of Egypt, how he went from bottom to top of the world. What were those lessons? What was the verses that explained his journey? Also is rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Quran did not come in one go because our hearts would not be able to take this Qur'an in one go, rather in bite-sized chunks. As we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if this Qur'an was to be revealed on a mountain, then that mountain would crumble and be destroyed due to the power of this holy Qur'an. 
There are also countless good deeds one can attain simply by reading the Quran. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, he narrates that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith, uh, said in a hadith recorded in a Tirmidhi, whoever recites a letter from the book of Allah, he will be credited with a good deed. And a good deed gets a tenfold reward. I do not say Alif Lam Meem is one letter, but Alif is a letter, Lam is a letter, and Meem is a letter. We hear this hadith a lot, especially in Ramadan. But I just want to kind of zoom in a bit to show how generous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Imagine we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, which I'm sure everyone here is more than capable of saying. A sheikh had said recently in a talk I was listening to, he said it contains 19 letters. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim contains 19 letters. And if we times it by 10, because Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said every letter gets a tenfold reward, that is 190 hasanat simply by saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Imagine this was pounds. We are not doing justice to the kalam of Allah by comparing it to monetary terms, but it, it is easy for us to understand. Imagine if somebody said, if you said Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, here's 190 pounds. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, 190 pounds. It's very unlikely anyone would be able to pull out 190 pounds so easily, so simply. Not for one person, not for two person, but for two billion people around this world, or one to two billion people, constantly, constantly. We're not just saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Imagine how many letters we utter in our salah every day and then times that by every week and then times that by every month and then times that by every year and then times that by our entire lives. That is the rahmah, that is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who doesn't just give us one for one but he continuously, continuously multiplies. Aisha radiallahu anha narrates and this is a message to my brothers and sisters who are perhaps not as proficient in reciting the Qur'an, who struggle to recite the Qur'an. Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa had said, that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has said, the one who is proficient in the recitation of the Qur'an will be with the honorable and obedient scribes, i.e. the malaika, the angels. And he who recites the Qur'an and finds it difficult to recite, doing his best to recite in the, in the best way possible, will have two rewards. Again, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He acknowledges that this language is difficult and it is not for everyone, especially for our revert brothers and sisters. And so he gives you double reward compared to those who are proficient in the language of reciting Arabic. The Quran is a direct conversation between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ourselves. And no doubt it is a gift full of healing, of reward and reminders. But unfortunately, how lazy is man who turns away and becomes occupied in this dunya instead of acknowledging the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our laziness and bring us closer to the kalam Allah, the words of Him through the Holy Quran. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wal mursaleen, Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. To help us further build a relationship with the Holy Qur'an and for us to be amongst its friend. Remember I started the khutbah, Ya Sahib al-Qur'an, O companion of the Qur'an. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, which I'll narrate to you now, which I'll read to you now. An Abi Umama radiallahu an, qala sami'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqool, اقرأوا القرآن فإنه يأتي يوم القيامة شفيعا لأصحابي. The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم gave in a very clear instruction: read the Quran, for it will come on the day of resurrection, interceding لأصحابي for its companions. Look at the respect Allah سبحانه وتعالى he gives us. He doesn't just say mu'minin to the believers. He calls this Quran a friend, or we are a friend to this Quran to show the intimate relationship we should have with this Qur'an and it will speak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala personifies the Qur'an in a way which befits its majesty and it will speak and say on Yawm Al-Qiyamah when our mouths will be sealed and our hands will be tied that brother Ahmed he used to recite Surah Mulk every night because he heard the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu say whoever recites Surah Mulk before he sleeps will be protected from Adab Al-Qabr the punishment of the grave wa Adab Al-Jahannam and the punishment of the hellfire. This is why he recited it. And some narrations say that this surah, Surah Al-Mulk, 
will drag a man out of the fire into the paradise. It will continuously, continuously intercede for a man until it is dragging it, that person, out of the hellfire. The Qur'an will speak. It will say that sister used to recite Surah Al-Kaf every Friday because she heard a hadith where Prophet Muhammad ﷺ said, whoever recites Surah Al-Kaf on Yawm Al-Jum'ah will have a nur, will have a light shining on them from one week to another week. And also it is a protection against several fatain, including the fitna of Dajjal. So the Qur'an will speak, it will intercede, it will fight our case. Just like a lawyer, solicitor fights our case, the Qur'an will fight our case bi idhnillahi ta'al on yawm al-qiyamah. And likewise, my brothers, more scaringly, just like the Qur'an can fight your corner and fight your case, it may also speak against us. Prophet Muhammad wasallam said this Qur'an is an evidence for and it is also an evidence against you. And that is why one of the names, one of the words for the Qur'an is Al-Furqan. Because it manifests the truth. It is revealed to distinguish the haqq from the batil, the truth from the falsehood. And so it could speak against us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. It will testify against those who read the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who understood its meanings, but did not act upon those meanings and did not practice those fard, those fara'id, those, those obligatory actions that he told us to do. And finally, my brothers and sisters, I want us all to avoid being involved or included in those where the Prophet Muhammad wasallam had complained against in the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Furqan, which is quite ironic because we are talking about the Furqan today. A man will say on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Ya waylata laytani lam attakhidh fulanan khalila. Woe to me, ya waylata, shame on me. I wish I had never taken so and so as a close friend. Laqad adallani anil dhikri ba'da idh jaani. Wa kana shaytanu lil insani khadula. It is he, that friend, which made me go astray from the reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it reached me. And shaytan has always betrayed humanity. وَقَالُوا الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا And then the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ cried, O oh my Lord, my people have indeed received this Qur'an with neglect. On that day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, a man will say, shame on me, if only I didn't befriend this person. If only I didn't occupy myself so much on Instagram, watching those Netflix series as being led astray. I'm not saying they're entirely wrong, but the majority of those are distracting. And Prophet Muhammad is ironic how he then complains to Allah about those from his people who denied the Kalam Allah, the Quran. So for clarity, the Quran is also in terms of its recitation, its listening, its reflecting, its memorization, tadabbur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, do they not reflect on this Quran or are there locks upon their heart? We are very fortunate that today um, we have several uh, means including YouTube and we have talks available at our fingertips. Use that technology that we have today to our benefit. Technology is obviously not my friend with this microphone. So to summarize my brothers and sisters today, the Quran will speak, uh, speak either for or against us on the day of judgment. Depending on whether we read it with tadabbar, with reflection and action upon it or we abandoned it. And it has many benefits, this Qur'an, including healing of the body, the mind, and the soul. Reading it can increase one's hasanat exponentially, and to befriend the Qur'an, inshallah ta'ala, will allow us to be classed as sahib al-Qur'an, the friend of the Qur'an, which I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us all to be called on Yawm al-Qiyamah, and allow this Qur'an to fight our case on that day when we will need as much help as possible. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings and that he forgives our sins and allows us to change our ways and allow us to build an intimate relationship with this holy book, the Qur'an. And he allows us to have that title, Sahib al-Qur'an, the companion, the associate, the friend of the Qur'an. Allahumma ameen. If I've spoken any good today from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if I've made a mistake from myself or from the shaitan, so I ask for your forgiveness. And this is a reminder first and foremost to myself.
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الاسلام في فلسطين وفي سوريا وفي يمن وفي كل مكان اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر ومن عذاب جهنم ومن فتنة المحيا والممات ومن شر فتنة المسيح الدجال اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن والعجس والكسل والبخل والجبن وضلع الدين وغلبة الرجال يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين